prime numbers are always a topic of interest in mathematics, especially in number theory. Mersenne primes are a special type of prime numbers named after the French mathematician Marine Mersenne, who studied them in the early 17th century. Mersenne numbers are those numbers that are one less than a power of two. That is, the numbers of the form mn equal to 2 raised to n minus 1. And what about Mersenne primes? They are the prime numbers that are 1 less than a power of 2. The first 5 Mersenne primes are 3, 7, 31, 127 and 8191. You can see the gap between them increasing rapidly. As of October 2020, 51 Mersenne primes are known. On December 21st in 2018, it was announced that Great Internet Mersenne Prime Search discovered the largest known prime. And it is a Mersenne Prime. That is so interesting. And the number is 2 raised to 82,589,933 minus 1, having 24,862,048 digits. A computer volunteered by Patrick Lorac made the find on December 7, 2018. Since 1997, all newly found Mersenne primes have been discovered by Jim's. That is Great Internet Mersenne Prime Search, a distributed computing project. In December 2020, a major milestone in the project was passed after all exponents below 100 million were checked at least once. Let's go to an interesting theorem. If 2 raised to p minus 1 is prime, then p is prime. The proof is very simple. Suppose that P is composite. Hence it can be written as P equal to AB with 1 less than A less than P and 1 less than B less than P. Then 2 raised to P minus 1 equal to 2 raised to AB minus 1. And it is equal to 2 raised to A whole raised to B minus 1. We can write this as 2 raised to A minus 1 into 2 raised to a whole raised to b minus 1 plus 2 raised to a whole raised to b minus 2 plus etc plus 2 raised to a plus 1. Because 1 plus 2 raised to a plus etc plus 2 raised to a whole raised to b minus 1 is a geometric series. From this, it is clear that 2 raised to a minus 1 divides 2 raised to p minus 1. Also, 1 less than a less than p implies 1 less than 2 raised to a minus 1 less than 2 raised to p minus 1. This is a contradiction to our assumption that 2 raised to p minus 1 is prime. Hence by contrapositive method if 2 raised to p minus 1 is prime then p is prime. Now what about the converse of this theorem? It is not true. That is, if p is a prime, it does not imply 2 raised to p minus 1 is prime. For example, 11 is a prime, but 2 raised to 11 minus 1 is equal to 2047. And it is not a prime since it can be written as a product 23 into 89. From the above theorem, we get an equivalent definition of the Mersenne primes as they are the prime numbers of the form mp equal to 2 raised to p minus 1 for some prime p. Now another result let a greater than or equal to 2 n greater than or equal to 2 be two natural numbers and let a raised to n minus 1 be a prime then a equal to 2 and n is a prime. Let's prove it. Since a raised to n minus 1 is a prime, it cannot have any factor q such that 1 less than q less than a raised to n minus 1. We can write a raised to n minus 1 
as a minus 1 into a raised to n minus 1 plus a raised to n minus 2 plus etc plus 1. Again, a minus 1 divides a raised to n minus 1. Given a greater than or equal to 2, we have to prove that a equal to 2. Suppose a greater than 2, then a minus 1 will be greater than 1. Since n greater than or equal to 2, we get 1 less than a minus 1 less than a raised to n minus 1, which is a contradiction to our assumption that a raised to n minus 1 is a prime. So, a must be equal to 2. If possible, let n is composite. We have to prove that n is prime. So, suppose n is composite. Then there exist two natural numbers p and q such that 1 less than p less than n, 1 less than q less than n and n equal to pq. Now, a raised to n minus 1 equal to a raised to pq minus 1 which is equal to a raised to q whole raised to p minus 1. And it can be written as a raised to q minus 1 into a raised to q whole raised to p minus 1 plus a raised to q whole raised to p minus 2 plus etc plus 1. This implies a raised to q minus 1 is a factor of a raised to n minus 1. Since a equal to 2 and 1 less than q less than n, we get 1 less than a raised to q minus 1 less than a raised to n minus 1, which implies a raised to n minus 1 is composite, which is a contradiction. Therefore, n is prime. The above result implies that if a greater than or equal to 2, n greater than or equal to 2 and a raised to n minus 1 is prime then a raised to n minus 1 is a Mersenne prime. Next is a theorem. A Mersenne prime cannot be a waferic prime. What is a waferic prime? It is a prime number say p such that p square divides 2 raised to p minus 1 minus 1. So, to prove a person, a Mersenne prime cannot be a waferic prime, we will show that if p equal to 2 raised to n minus 1 is a Mersenne prime, then 2 raised to p minus 1 congruent to 1 mode p square does not hold. That is, 2 raised to p minus 1 is incongruent to 1 mode p square. Let p equal to 2 raised to n minus 1 be a Mersenne prime. Then m is a prime. By Fermat's little theorem, 2 raised to m congruent to 2 mod m. Uh, since uh, this is because we know the result, if p is a prime and a be any number, then a raised to p congruent to a mod p. So 2 raised to m congruent to 2 mod p m. This implies m divides 2 raised to m minus 2 and we know that p, p is 2 raised to m minus 1. So m divides p minus 1. Therefore p minus 1 is a multiple of m and p minus 1 can be written as m lambda. If 2 raised to p minus 1 congruent to 1 mod p square, then p square divides 2 raised to m lambda minus 1. Since p equal to 2 raised to m minus 1, we get 2 raised to m minus 1 the whole square divides 2 raised to m lambda minus 1. Now 2 raised to m lambda minus 1 by 2 raised to m minus 1 can be written as a multiple of 2 raised to m minus 1. That is, it is equal to k into 2 raised to m minus 1, which is congruent to 0 mode 2 raised to m minus 1. This implies 0 congruent to 2 raised to m lambda minus 1 by 2 raised to m minus 1, which is equal to 1 plus 2 raised to m plus etc. plus 2 raised to lambda minus 1 into m again by the result of geometric series. It is congruent to minus lambda mod 2 raised to m minus 1. 
This implies 2 raised to n minus 1 divides lambda. Therefore, lambda greater than or equal to 2 raised to n minus 1. This implies p minus 1 greater than or equal to m into 2 raised to n minus 1 because p minus 1 by m is lambda. This is a contradiction since m greater than or equal to 2. Hence the proof. Another interesting fact about Mersenne prime is their correspondence with perfect numbers. A number is perfect if its sum of divisors is twice its value. So the result is every Mersenne primes give rise to an even perfect number. If 2 raised to p minus 1 is a Mersenne prime, then 2 raised to p minus 1 into 2 raised to p minus 1 is a perfect number. Uh, let's start the proof. Let sigma be the divisor function that is sigma of n denotes the sum of divisors of n. Then sigma is a multiplicative function that is sigma of mn equal to sigma of m into sigma of n for every mn. Therefore, sigma of 2 raised to p minus 1 into 2 raised to p minus 1 can be written as sigma of 2 raised to p minus 1 into sigma of 2 raised to p minus 1. The divisors of 2 raised to p minus 1 equal to 1, 2, 2 square, etc. 2 raised to p minus 1. And their sum is a geometric series. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 2 square plus etc plus 2 raised to p minus 1 and it is equal to 2 raised to p minus 1. Now 2 raised to p minus 1 is a prime number. This implies the only divisors of it are 1 and itself. So the sum of the divisors is 2 raised to p minus 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 raised to p. Hence, sigma of 2 raised to p minus 1 into 2 raised to p minus 1 equal to sigma of 2 raised to p minus 1 into sigma of 2 raised to p minus 1. It is equal to 2 raised to p minus 1 into 2 raised to p, which is equal to 2 into 2 raised to p minus 1 into 2 raised to p minus 1. Therefore, 2 raised to p minus 1 into 2 raised to p minus 1 is a perfect number. In fact, there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between even perfect numbers and Mersenne primes. There is a theorem named Euclid Euler theorem which states that an even natural number is perfect if and only if it has the uh, form 2 raised to p minus 1 into 2 raised to p minus 1. Next is a primality test for Mersenne primes. This is actually an interesting test. Uh, let's see how the test works. Let mp equal to 2 raised to p minus 1 be a Mersenne number with p an odd prime. Define sequence si for every i greater than or equal to 0 by si equal to 4 if i equal to 0 and si, si minus 1 square minus 2 otherwise. Then mp is prime if and only if sp minus 2 congruent to 0 mode mp. The number sp minus 2 mode mp is called the Lucas lemma Lucas lemma residue of P. Now we can see some examples regarding Lucas lemma test. Let P equal to 7. We have to check M7 equal to 2 raised to 7 minus 1 is prime or not. By Lucas lemma test, M7 is prime if and only if S7 minus 2 equal to S5 congruent to 0 mode M7, where Si is as defined above. So S0 equal to 4, S1 is S0 square minus 2, which is equal to 14. 
S2 is S1 square minus 2 which is congruent to 67 mod 127. 127 is our M7. Then uh, finding out S3, S4 and S5 we get S5 congruent to 0 mod 127. Therefore, by Lucas lemma test, M7 is prime. It is true since M7 is equal to 127, which is a prime. Now, another example. See, M11 equal, uh, equal to 2047. It is actually 2 raised to 11 minus 1. And it can be written as 23 into 89. This implies M11 is not a prime number. And applying Lucas lemma test, we get uh, S0 as 4, S1 4 square minus 2 equal to 14 mod 2047, S2 14 square minus 2 congruent to 194 mod 2047. Finding these all, we get S9 congruent to 1736 mode 2047. So S9 is incongruent to 0 mode 2047. So by Lucas lemma test, M11 uh, which is equal to 2047 is not prime. So in both the cases, Lucas lemma test holds. Although M11 equal to 2047 has non-trivial factors, the Lucas lemma test gives no indication about what they might be. Now let's see a proof of sufficiency for Lucas lemma test. We have to show that SP minus 2 congruent to 0 mode MP implies that MP is prime where the sequence SI is defined by SI equal to 4 I when I equal to 0 and SI minus 1 whole square minus 2 otherwise and MP equal to 2 raised to P minus 1. Suppose SP minus 2 congruent to 0 mode MP. Let W equal to 2 plus root 3 and V be 2 minus root 3. Then it follows by induction that SI equal to W raised to 2 raised to I plus V raised to 2 raised to I for every I. Uh, the proof is very simple. See S0 can be written as W raised to 2 raised to 0 plus V raised to 2 raised to 0 which is equal to 2 plus root 3 plus 2 minus root 3 equal to 4. Suppose SN minus 1 equal to w raised to 2 raised to n minus 1 plus v raised to 2 raised to n minus 1. Then sn is equal to sn minus 1 square minus 2 which can be written as w raised to 2 raised to n minus 1 plus v raised to 2 raised to n minus 1 the whole square minus 2 and which is equal to w raised to 2 raised to n plus v raised to 2 raised to n plus 2 into w into v whole raised to 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 2. Since w into v is 2 plus root 3 into 2 minus root 3, it is equal to 1. So w raised to 2 raised to n plus v raised to 2 raised to n equal to sn. Okay. Therefore, by induction, SI equal to W raised to 2 raised to I plus V raised to 2 raised to I for every I. Now, SP minus 2 equal to W raised to 2 raised to P minus 2 plus V raised to 2 raised to P minus 2. Since SP minus 2 congruent to 0 mode MP, we get W raised to 2 raised to P minus 2 plus V raised to 2 raised to P minus 2 equal to K into NP for some integer K. So W raised to 2 raised to P minus 2 equal to K into MP minus V raised to 2 raised to P minus 2. 
now multiply throughout by w raised to p minus 2 so we get w raised to 2 raised to p minus 1 equal to k into np into w raised to 2 raised to p minus 2 minus 1 put this as equation 1 for a contradiction suppose np is composite and let q be the smallest prime factor of np mersenne numbers are odd so q greater than 2 let zq be the integers modulo q and let x be the set of all a plus b root 3 such that ab belongs to zq define multiplication in x by a plus root 3 into b into c plus root 3 d equal to ac plus 3 bd mod q plus root 3 into ad plus bc mod q clearly this multiplication is closed that is the product of numbers from x is itself in x the size of x is denoted by card mod mode of x in the case of addition x is an abelian group and for multiplication it clearly have an associative binary operation with identity 1 let x star denote the invertible elements of x with respect to multiplication we have a result let uh, which states that let x be a set with a binary operation which is associative and has an identity then the set x star of invertible elements in x form a group it can be easily proved clearly one belongs to x star so x star is non-empty now we only need to show that x star is closed under the binary operation but uh, if x1 and x2 are invertible elements in x star with inverses x1 inverse x2 inverse then x1 into x2 whole inverse equal to x2 inverse into x1 inverse which also belongs to x star hence the result holds so here x star is a group now we have an another result which is as follows if g is a finite group then the order of an element is at most the order of the group also if x is an element of g then x raised to r equal to 1 then the order of x divides r that is if x is an element of g and x raised to r equal to 1 then the order of x divides r From this, we get the order of any element of x star is at most q square minus 1. How? Since x star contains at least one non-invertible element, namely 0 and modulus of 0. And modulus of x star, actually it is order of x star since x star is a group. So order of x star less than or equal to cardinality of x minus 1 which is equal to q square minus 1 now mp is congruent to 0 mode q and w belongs to x so k into mp into w raised to 2 raised to p minus 2 equal to 0 in x by 1 w raised to 2 raised to p minus 1 is uh, equal to minus 1 in x Squaring both sides, we get w raised to 2 raised to p is equal to 1. Thus, w belongs to x star and has inverse w raised to 2 raised to p minus 1. Furthermore, order of w divides 2 raised to p. However, w raised to 2 raised to p minus 1 is not equal to 1 since it is equal to minus 1 so the order does not divide 2 raised to p minus 1 thus the order is exactly 2 raised to p and so the order of an element is at most the order of the group so 2 raised to p is less than or equal to order of x star less than or equal to q square minus 1 
and it is less than q square but we know that q is the smallest prime factor of the composite number mp so we get q square less than or equal to mp which is equal to 2 raised to p minus 1 then 2 raised to p will be less than 2 raised to p minus 1 this is a contradiction therefore mp is prime proof for sufficiency is complete uh, completes here now many fundamental questions about mers and primes remain unresolved it is not even known whether the set of mers and primes is finite or infinite but mers and primes are an interesting topic even today